briefly, what is going on in our country that everybody, not everybody, but almost half the population is overweight or obese? Right, we should embrace all bodies while still promoting health. And that's tricky. Should chicken fingers be outlawed? I don't know, maybe. Hi, Brooke. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me here on call with Dr. Dave and all of my viewers. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, so Brooke, I came across your website. I have, I'm a preventative cardiologist. My mission is prevention of heart disease. And clearly I'm losing this battle, but I'm not gonna give up. And that's why I have people like you on my site. So the first question, the elephant in the room, no pun intended, is why is just over 40% of the US population obese. Let me just frame this another way. If we were to find out that 40% of the US population was suffering from brain cancer, right? Or the 40% of the US population had COVID or 40% of the US population was affected by terrorism, there would be outrage. And there is outrage with some of the things I mentioned. But when it comes to obesity, I feel like we're just sitting around looking at each other dumbfounded, trying to figure out with one fed diet or the other, how to get this under control. So I know it's a long winded question and it's, it could be potentially a long winded answer, but just briefly, what is going on in our country that everybody, not everybody, but almost half the population is overweight or obese? You know, I don't think that there's one answer, nor do I think the, any of the answers would be brief either. That said, I think that there's multiple components that we need to look into, right? So underlying factors of causes of obesity are, the main things are poor eating, right? And inactivity. Those are the two big things that we know. If you eat poorly and you don't move your body, most likely you're gonna gain weight and eventually it'll creep up until you become obese. But if we look into what is causing our poor eating, one, finances, especially think about how 2020 has gone, financially, it often can cost better or appear to cost more to eat healthy, right? And this is, I think, a real mis, um, misnomer or miscommunication that happens in the world because you can eat healthy for not too expensive. But so many people are just like, well, this is cheaper, let me grab it, right? So fast food compared to like a big healthy salad or the salads you'd get at fast food are unsatisfying. I mean, I've tried eating a salad at, at like McDonald's, like that does nothing for me, right? And I like salads. So I think that the, the availability of healthy foods, I think the price point of healthy foods, and then you can also talk about the marketing, right? We don't see advertisements for like beautiful kale. We don't see like roasted Brussels sprouts in a sexy commercial, right? We see like those kind of commercials again for unhealthy foods. And so I think that that advertising finances and then really what our palates have been trained to eat. You know, if you think about from as soon as you're a baby, you're given rice cereal, you're given crackers, we're, we're raised on this. And what it does is trains your palate to want that kind of food. You know, I have two young kids and we joke about like the, the kid food and the kid menus. The menus that you can get, you know, at your diner or a local restaurant or, you know, anything for kids, there's nothing remotely nutritious. So we're also starting at a very young age teaching kids to eat foods that are not necessarily healthy. Wow. Then, you know, I think another compound is then we deal with talking about people's bodies. And that's why it's so tricky, right? Because the last thing that I, as a practitioner, or I'm sure that you as a doctor would ever want to do is to body shame someone. We need to love our bodies at every weight, mm. right? And it's okay to not be a size four. It's okay not to be super skinny. I'm certainly not super skinny. I'm a proud size eight. That said, I think it's really important that we talk about health versus body size. And I think that that's something that as professionals and for years we've been tiptoeing to do it in the right way. And we've become more sensitive recently, which is a good thing, right? We should embrace all bodies while still promoting health. And that's tricky.
That's a great answer. And you know, the frustrating part of that answer is that a couple of those things are totally out of our control. You know, the marketing campaign from a lot of these food businesses, companies, fast foods, you name it, cereal companies. I mean, it's overwhelming and there's so much psychology. They are, everything is really planned and calculated to get us to eat the product. So I think you're right. I think we have to, first of all, I think we have to educate ourselves, okay? We can't just be sitting ducks any longer. We can't walk in and be manipulated because we are manipulated. Every time we go into the supermarket, every time I pull up to, not that I pull up to a lot of fast food places, but anytime somebody pulls up to a fast food place they're being manipulated. It's very, you have to go, and I've done videos on this where I've driven through McDonald's drive through on camera, and I've tried to order healthy. I've reviewed Chipotle. Most of these restaurants, you almost cannot order healthy. And, and you're 100% right, the salads are, are abysmal. So I think, you know, the number one is we need to do better in the schools. We need to do better at home. We need to do better from a regulatory perspective, because I'm sorry, we can't just assume everybody's gonna wanna learn about this stuff. I think we have to hold people accountable. And we almost, like we did with tobacco companies, we have to kind of regulate people into more nutritious food. I think that's a great answer. And I think if we don't do something very quickly, and, and, and I think it has to come from the government. I really do. And I'm not a socialist. I'm really not. I'm a capitalist at heart. But I think it has to come from the government where we talk about, we have people like you, we have people who are knowledgeable and practical, and we talk about what can we do in the schools? What can we do at home? And what can we do in these restaurants? Should chicken fingers be outlawed? I don't know, maybe. I mean, it's trans fat. You're giving your kids trans fat. Those cute little baby crackers that we feed them in their high chair, just give them a candy bar. So I think everything you said is correct, but I think it has to start with government, unfortunately.